Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Look MRI, and this is a 25-year-old gentleman who had some nonspecific neurological complaints. He had an MRI of his brain, which thankfully is normal, but he had a couple of findings that simulate disease. So this is one here. We're going to go down towards the uh, bottom of the brain. We see his left internal auditory canal. We see his semicircular canals over here. We see his cochlea here. And just anterior to his internal artery canal is a little triangle of low signal. This is dark. It looks like air, an air-filled space. On the opposite side, we see something very bright, just the opposite. And so this is the petrous portion of the temporal bone. There's a mastoid portion and then the petrous portion that's here in front of the um, internal artery canal. So this patient has air on one side, and on the other side, he has either fluid within an air cavity or fatty marrow. Now, this we really can't tell. I've had lots of uh, people over the years uh, show me this asymmetry and worried that it could be an inflammatory process. What we have to do in this is to look at a T1-weighted view and see is this fat, which would be bright, or is it fluid, which would be more mixed or low in signal. So this is air. This is a pneumatized petrous portion of the temporal bone. Again, mastoid portion is filled with air, and this petrous portion is filled with air. Now we're going to put up this view here, and we're going to go on down and find the same area, which is right here. So this is a T1-weighted view, and fat is bright. Now we can say with confidence that this is just fat, fatty marrow in the petrous portion. So we have a pneumatized petrous portion on the left and a non-pneumatized petrous portion on the right. And this is pretty common, and it causes this really prominent asymmetry that catches the eye. Now, the other finding, we will go down here to the orbital apex, and here we go. So I'm going to scoot them down. Now, in this view, we see an area of ovoid low signal, and this is right by the cavernous carotid artery. So flowing blood in the arteries will be dark. This is the basal artery. This is the left cavernous carotid artery. And if we go up one more cut, there. This is an ovoid area of low signal. So when we see this, we get nervous that this could be an aneurysm. An aneurysm off the cavernous carotid artery could look identical to this, a little ovoid area of fast-flowing blood that would be dark. But there is also an anatomic variant here of an air cell. You can have pneumatization of the clinoid process or a little basically um, communicating with the sphenoid sinus here, a little recess of the sphenoid sinus. And that can also cause an area of low signal just filled with air instead of flowing blood. And we're going to put up a T1-weighted view to try to troubleshoot as well. And we're going to go down to the area. And there it is. So on this view, we see the optic nerve coming along here. And the lateral wall of the optic uh, canal is the clinoid process, a piece of bone, part of the sphenoid bone. So the anterior clinoid process is here. This is the anterior clinoid process here. It's filled with fatty marrow. Here we see there's marrow in front and marrow in back, and this is right in the middle. So this looks like this is um, a little ear cavity within or a pneumatized portion of the clinoid, anterior clinoid process. And that is almost like a little outpouching or recess of the sphenoid sinus. And, and now we can say with confidence this is not an aneurysm. This is just a pneumatization of the anterior process, simulating the appearance of an aneurysm. This is another view. This is the clinoid process here on the right. And this is that pneumatization on the left. You can see the carotid artery coming right up to it. Now, when we are not confident, which is pretty common, we will go ahead and get an MRA of the head and just make 100% sure that this is not an aneurysm. Now, this is the sphenoid sinus filled with air, and if we look up right over here, we can see that open up right there, and it looks like it communicates with that um, pneumat pneumatized portion. And again, that cavernous carotid artery is right there, and it's real close, so we're tempted to get an uh, MRA, but we are confident that this is just a pneumatized, pneumatized um, uh, portion of that clinoid process. So we are going to uh, not do that. But anyway... Now, this is the sphenoid sinus here, and if we look up here, we see this area going off, it's superior and lateral. It looks like a little channel open, and if we go to the next view, we see that. So it looks like this does communicate with the sphenoid sinus through a little channel. So 
it increases our confidence that this is just a pneumatized clinoid um, rather than um, an aneurysm. But look how close they are. Wow. This is the cavernous carotid artery. There they are touching. So some people still would like to do the uh, MRA just to make really, really sure. But um, we do have a good degree of confidence this is just um, a normal anatomic variant. That's it. So thank you so very much.